All right, welcome everybody. This is Gator's first podcast for the Gator game against Ole Miss last week and for the future game against Arkansas this week, as well as a mini preview of the SEC because there's not too many games in the SEC this week. First, uh, we're going to go over the UF Ole Miss game, talk about you know what we thought during the game, what we did after the game. kind of sucked. <laughs> I was there. Uh, it was very deflating. I've never heard the swamp that quiet. Uh, at certain points in that game, it was kind of weird. Even even when we were driving and kind of getting back into the game, it just seemed like we were deflated. It was very very odd. At halftime, it was 17 to seven, and I still had a feeling that we were a couple plays away from losing that game because they they made some key mistakes and we got kind of lucky. And then the first half uh, ended, the second half started, and oh man, losing all those fumbles and. It was just, it was really bad. I was sitting right next to the <laughs> Ole Miss section in the upper deck in the southeast end zone where you usually see the other team. Uh, it was really depressing sitting next to all those fans. But, you know, we'll have to regroup, come back next week, and see what we could do to beat uh, an Arkansas team that's struggling. <laughs> After the game, what I ended up doing is just going getting drunk and <laughs> having a good time, make sure that I forgot all about the game. How about you, James? Well, during the game, well, I guess we should start off with before the game. I was thinking about how we hadn't turned the ball over yet this year, and maybe we'd go the whole season without turning the ball over or we'll go a significant part of it, and that would be so cool. And I think that even though I didn't speak that out loud, just thinking it jinxed us because uh, it's pretty ugly how many times we even fumbled the ball and got it back. I think they grease a thing up every time we were on offense. After the game, it was obviously upsetting or whatever, I watched the rest of the games. I made some beer, so maybe we should call that beer Tim Tebow's Tears or something, <laughs> and uh, it'll cure cancer. And uh, as far as what it meant going forward, uh, watching the rest of the games, you got a real good feel of what it meant going forward because, at least for the SEC race and the national picture, <clears throat> considering all the other teams that have lost this weekend, uh, with Tennessee and Georgia both losing, it's conceivable that we could still lose the LSU game and go beat Georgia and be 10-2 and two and headed to the SEC championship game. Uh, and then nationally, you know, that puts you right in the mix. If we can make it to Atlanta, you never know what's going to happen. With everyone else, I think it's pretty clear that probably no one's going to go undefeated. Probably our the biggest worry for us would be like a BYU going undefeated and us having two losses and being shut out of a national title game. As far as how I feel about the team, um, I obviously don't feel as good because, you know, what the hell was that? But... <laughs> Um, I think that we'll avoid another game like this, but you kind of are always worried, you know. You don't want to say, oh, we could probably take LSU because we're at home. Uh, we just lost Ole Miss at home, so uh, it's sort of uh, deflating. What about you? What do you think it means for our future and for the uh, future of the SEC? Well, with all the rest of those teams losing this past week, I think that we're right there with everybody else. Um, I, I got to think if we went out, we're probably in the national championship game. You got to think that, right? I mean, I mean, unless Penn State, maybe, if they go undefeated and Oklahoma or Texas goes undefeated, Missouri, maybe one of those three teams, maybe we don't have a shot. But I, I don't see one of those other big teams not going undefeated. I, I think one of those teams out of the Big 12 will probably go undefeated because all three of them look pretty good. But other than that, I think that, you know, we have a shot right there. You know, I'm not really all that worried. No, if we lose another game, then we're out of it. I, I don't think that we have a shot, but that's fine. You know, next time. I'll drink Tim Tebow's tears. I think that'd be pretty cool. Anyways, upcoming this next Saturday is the Arkansas game. It's in Arkansas. Both I and James will be traveling in for it. I have a job interview on Friday, and the company decided to fly me to Atlanta and then out to Arkansas and back, which I thought was really nice. So I'll be going. James will also be going. He'll be traveling from Dallas area, so it's going to be really nice to see uh, some other people. Ryan Crutchfield will be out there. I think that Brian might be out there. should be really, really fun. Uh, what do I expect to see from us? After that game, there was a post -co post-game press conference with uh, Tim Tebow, and I've never been as inspired as the last 45 seconds of that press conference. He basically said he's going to carry the team on his shoulders and you won't see anybody work as hard or try as hard or dominate as much as he will. And I kind of got goosebumps. It was really nice to hear, hear that from him. So I'm expecting us to roll all over them. I mean, Arkansas has looked pretty terrible <laughs> this season. 
you know, they, they lost last week to Texas, 52-10. to 10. Texas is a good team, but Arkansas, you know, they should be keeping it close or at least making a game of it representing the SEC, and they're not. They've had a couple of close wins off of some pretty poor teams. So I, I, I think that we win by, like, 40, and m- my prediction is going to be something like 49-13. to 13. James? Yeah, I'm also fairly confident about Arkansas. I mean, I mentioned last week that I Colt McCoy is on my college fantasy team and how excited I was to have him play against Arkansas. I mean, they've been getting beat by 40 by about everyone. doesn't matter, home or road or whatever. So, you know, I also think that with Tim Tebow's comments, with the comments from the rest of the team, we should be fairly angry. Uh, I think that all that trying to be cute and not show the whole playbook and stuff is out the window. We're going to really just come out and roll and go for it, try to hang, you know, 100 points on them, take it out on them. And I don't really think there's that much they could do to stop it. For as far as a prediction for the score, I mean, what was Texas, 52-10? to 10? So I'll say 55-10, uh, to 10, Urban Meyer kicks a late field goal to make it more than Texas beat them by. That wraps up the uh, Florida game this week, but there's a lot of SEC games on by, so we're going to go ahead and combine the uh, other SEC game predictions in this podcast. So first game up would be South Carolina at Ole Miss. Ole Miss is going to be coming off the high of, you know, toppling Florida last week. South Carolina's, you know, kind of faded from the national spotlight after their early losses. I think that... uh, no, I think South Carolina is going to come in and win this game because I think Ole Miss has a letdown game after playing us. Uh, they played pretty good last week. Uh, I mean, I think it was more us shooting ourselves in the foot than them out playing us. And I think the statistics bear that out. But uh, like I said, they're going to have a letdown game. I think Spurrier's team will thrive as an underdog and uh, come in there and knock them off. What do you think? Yeah, I also have South Carolina winning this game. Uh, South Carolina's two losses are to Vanderbilt and Wake Forest, two pretty good teams so far. Um, and I think they come in and and upset. It's probably going to be an upset of uh, Ole Miss. They're going to have a left down. The next game on the docket is Auburn at Vandy. This is the game day week. Uh, game day game, excuse me. Auburn's coming off a win against Tennessee. Very close game, 14-12. to <clears throat> Vanderbilt had a bye week last week after joining the rest of the SEC in the top 25 ranking, uh, it seems like. But it's in Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt has looked pretty good this season. They're 4-0. They're leading the SEC East. I think that they they come out strong, but I don't think that they could beat Auburn. I think Auburn comes up there, upsets them. I think it's a close game, 23-17. Is it really an upset to say Auburn's going to beat Vanderbilt? I mean, I know they've looked pretty good, and Auburn can't really figure out their offense so far, but, I mean, it's Auburn and it's Vanderbilt. Is anybody even going to show up to game day? <laughs> I'm going to take Auburn also. The last SEC game this week would be Kentucky at Alabama. Alabama recently rose up to number two. I keep thinking that if you've been listening to the picks, I keep thinking Alabama is going to have you know freshman mistake game and uh, kind of lose one that they shouldn't. And they're coming at home after the big win last week. They're favored by 17 points, I think, 16 or 17 to over Kentucky. I don't know. I haven't seen that much out of Kentucky. I don't think that they, they're going to be capable of beating Bama, but maybe it's close early because uh, Alabama shows a little bit of their maturity with the number two ranking. So I say Kentucky covers, but doesn't win. Alabama's looked pretty good all, all season. I have no reason to think that they're not going to win this game. Kentucky, although they're 4-0, they have one good win, and it's kind of good, and it's against Louisville. So I think that Alabama rolls in this game 31-13. All right, for James, this is Chris. Uh, We'll also be here with the National Podcast in a couple days. Uh, Have a good time. Bye.